Today's reading from the poem will concentrate on the material we didn't cover before, the back half of it, and from pages 7 to 12. Today's reading tells the story of what happens when a nation reforms itself in favor of virtue. Uh, This doesn't happen in real life. It would take a miracle, but in fiction you can give yourself a miracle if that's what you desire, and that's what happens here. Uh, But... Uh, And so he tells the story of the success, uh, a nation that reforms itself and gets rid of all vice. Uh, And what's the consequence? Uh, What do they win by this transformation that is too difficult for us, but not impossible to the imagination? Well, they stop being a great and powerful and significant nation. Uh, So uh, we see that the hive uh, suffers many losses uh, through its uh, the difficulties they have defending themselves as a poor rather than a rich nation, and yet they they do succeed, uh, but uh, they fly off to an old hollow tree, and and what they've got is honesty, their virtue, uh, and they're content. They have their satisfaction. They they. They have little, but they're satisfied with little. Mm -hmm. And uh, that would be, according to Mandeville, the natural consequence of getting rid of vice and turning to honesty. And he thinks it's a bad deal. We can make up our own minds. But he thinks it's a bad deal, and that's what he wants to stress for us. Uh, We look at the end of the the moral. Uh, Bare virtue can't make nations uh, live in splendor. So if, if, if virtue is a very desirable thing, or at least uh, well spoken of, it, uh, it comes at a cost. To, uh, if you're willing to live uh, in an old hollow oak tree, uh, irrelevant, uh, not particularly big and powerful, although strong enough to defend yourself, uh, then you can afford virtue. Uh, if you want something more than that, if you have higher ambitions, then you need vice. Uh, so, uh, they that would revive a golden age, and so every, that includes almost everybody, all of us who complain about corruption and the lack of virtue all around it, Any, anybody who has a, a real and sincere desire to go uh, to a more virtuous society, uh, must be as free for acorns as for honesty. Uh, so acorns are the nuts that come from oak trees, notoriously bad food. You can, you can eat it, you can stay alive on it. Uh, it uh, it's not uh, much, there's not much pleasure in eating it. Uh, it's uh, uh, the more prosperous nations feed uh, their acorns to farm animals and eat human feeds to food themselves. And so uh, if, if honesty is your priority, if you would like us to live without vice, uh, then you better be prepared to accept acorns also as your priority. Uh, the, the dullest and most boring food. And for that to be the ceiling on your life and your ambition. Uh, But if you want comfort and ease and the splendors of more advanced society, uh, then you should recognize the truth about vice and its consequences. And now we can look at those consequences uh, to try to get a sense of uh, of his argument. Uh, So going back to where we started reading, uh, for today, here on uh, on page seven, uh, we're reminded of the importance of clever politics, of statecraft, the the art of uh, crafting a building or running a nation uh, that and that maintains a whole. Uh, and although each part complains, because everybody's aware of corruption. And everybody, all human beings are constantly complaining about the vice, at least of other people. If 
not often enough of our own, but we do complain about other people. But proper politics, proper statecraft, uh, can harmonize uh, our vices. So, so this is his metaphor. In, in music, uh, you've got you know, jarring is music that uh, sounds the, that are extreme, uh, not pleasant in themselves. Uh, if you had to listen to just the background musicians for, for a song, it would seem uh, very boring and hardly musical at all. Uh, but the trick of harmony is to put all those parts together uh, so that it makes a song and sounds beautiful together uh, because mostly they agree with a little variety, uh, a little uh, a few sharp or sour notes just to add spice. Uh, and politics is the same way. If you, if you have statecraft, if you're clever at politics, you can arrange things so that the vices which are noxious and evil, not, not desirable in themselves, uh, all together, uh, make a reasonable harmony. Uh, but this, then, is the story where our complaints are actually heard. Mostly we just complain very idly, and we, we just do it uh, because that's how people are, uh, because we don't think very far about the consequences of our, our complaints. Uh, and nothing ever happens. Uh, but um, this is the this is a story of a nation where these common sense judgments are played out. So, so avarice, being greedy, wanting too much for yourself, uh, that that's something that we all blame. Uh, that goes along with prodigality. So using too much, being too generous, uh, uh, living high. Uh, so that's thought to be a, a noble sin. It's not a good thing, but it's what uh, good people do. Good people go to a restaurant. When the bill comes, they, they pay for their friends. Uh, uh, so they have prodigality. Bad people go to a restaurant. When the bill comes, they... Uh, retire to the washroom so that they don't have to pay. Uh, but in Mandeville's uh, understanding of things, uh, the evil vice, the avarice, the greediness, wanting too much, uh, is not on top. It's the slave to the more noble vice, prodigality. Uh, because it's prodigality in some that allows avarice to succeed in getting something for those who want to turn a profit. Um, so he draws out this theme the other vices also have this character uh, that the uh, the badness keeps the economy going uh, which benefits us all uh, but uh, this is the place that suddenly changes their rules so just as we change our fashionable clothes, it's always there's always a difference what's in fashion or what's out of fashion in the way we dress. Uh, these people change their laws uh, so that they actually correct their vices. So here on page eight, we see the transformation start that, uh, as usual, human beings are complaining. Uh, and as usual, the people com who complain are themselves guilty of the things they complain about. Uh, but they say the normal thing. And so the land must sink for all its fraud. And we've got so many vices, so many crimes, so, many, so much bad behavior that the nation can't survive. Um, and you know, it's hypocrisy that does it. The, the loudest complainer here is... Uh, a small merchant, a glover who makes gloves for your hands and he sells an inferior product as, a, as though it were a superior product so it charges too much for things of bad quality. Uh, and that's normal according to Mandeville, but it's also normal to complain. And what's abnormal is that this time the complaints are actually heard. Uh, all the rogues, so all the bad people, uh, cry you know, brazenly, right, with no shame and complete hypocrisy. Uh, they cry out to the gods. Uh, 
asking for for virtue. Uh, and even among the gods, the, the sensible ones, the Mercury, the messenger of the gods, who knows all about human beings, uh, he just smiles at this. It's ridiculous to think that uh, human beings could or should want to be virtuous instead of having their normal vices. Uh, but in this case, the king of the gods decides to do something about it. And for some reason, the king of the gods does not do that for us. Uh, but as much as we complain, maybe we don't complain loudly enough. Uh, uh, maybe we're saved from our own hypocrisy. Uh, but in this story, the, uh, the king of the gods does here. Um, and so he makes a change in our nature. We can't get rid of our vices unless we stop being the human beings we are. And in fiction, you can do that. So uh, Jove uh, makes a miracle and suddenly everybody is honest. Um, and then we uh, trace the consequences of that. And that's most of the, the reading for today. Uh, and at each point, we see that the, the consequences are devastating. So what happens? As I say, for every, for every honest person, uh, for every dishonest person who stops being dishonest, then uh, many honest people suffer. Uh, so, uh, at from a certain point of view, it seems, it seems great. Uh, there's, there's no more waste, no taste for luxury, uh, no crimes or corruption or fraud. Uh, but uh, what happens then? Well, you know, they, uh, they hang a few and they kill a few of the, of the worst criminals who can never be reformed, uh, and the others they, they let go, uh, and then they've got no real use for the prison anymore. And the whole section of society, the people who work honestly in order to protect the others from crime, uh, is suddenly out of work. You know, all those honest people uh, who make locks for the doors. Well, there's nothing for them to do now. The doctors, uh, many of them go out of business because... People get sick much less often now that they don't have a taste for luxuries. Uh, the clergy, that is the people who work in, the, in religion, uh, their ranks are, are cleaned out. All of, the, all of the secretly dishonest priests uh, no longer have work to do. They're just a few of the truly holy. As with the doctors, there's just a, a few of the truly knowledgeable left. Uh, that's all that's, that's needed, and that all the number of the people who want to do those things. So the end result of this sudden shift toward honesty uh, is that the society suffers a deep, deep depression. So fraud is gone. Uh, all the people who used to work for the government are now no longer corrupt, so they get fired because there's nothing for them to do. They used to watch each other. Of course, they didn't actually watch each other. They just cooperated in their crimes. Uh, but now there's nothing for them to do. And there are also no vain costs, no luxuries. Right? Nobody buys anything that uh, that person doesn't need. Uh, so everybody's out of work. Everybody's looking for a job. But if everybody's looking for a job at the same time and there are fewer jobs, then nobody has work to do. Nobody can get a new job. And the... Society changes its character, it becomes an acorn-eating society, um, living in a tree. And when it had been a splendid uh, and convenient and enjoyable society before. And that's the deal that Mandeville offers us. Are you content to eat acorns? Then you can afford honesty. Would you like human food instead? Then you have to be realistic of vice. You can be hypocritical, that would be the normal but it would be better for you to wise up and understand the character of vice and that bad things are always tied to good things.